Do you mind? I know you see me trying to record this video. What up, y'all? My name is Benji. I'm a DP from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And today we're going to be breaking down how I shot this music video on a $2,000 budget. So first we're going to be going over the pre-production side of things because I was DP director and producer on this so if that's boring to you, you can just skip ahead to the cinematography part. So as far as pre-production I use an app called Millinote. This pretty much just allows me to put all my thoughts in one spot so the rest of the team can see. I'm not going to lie, I spent most of the budget on gear as you can see. And truth be told, the only way I was able to pull this off because I had a bunch of my friends who are talented filmmakers come and help. So the client, Nando, he reached out to me on Instagram and we met for coffee and then we started discussing what him and I's vision for the video was. And he told me he didn't really want anything story-based as much as he just wanted cinematic visuals. And we kind of agreed to make it like an 80s, 90s themed video. So for this shoot, we actually spread it out over two days just to make it a little bit easier. So we kind of knew that we wanted to do a car scene and then do something in the house. So we looked through a bunch of B&Bs and we finally found one we liked. Kind of that mid-century modern look. And then Nando also found this dope drop top Buick. And so we used that for the car scenes. And then after that, I just pulled some stills off Shot Deck. And this is kind of gave me and the rest of the crew some visual references of what I was hoping to go for. And originally we was going to do a trailer scene, but we couldn't find a trailer. So we just kind of... So after that, we locked down some shooting dates and then booked the B&B in the car. And all that was left after that was just to find a route to drive the car along. So I just kind of went out and drove around and found some spots that I liked. And then I also paid attention to when lighting was best and what direction we could shoot. So that way on the day we wouldn't be rushing to fight in sunlight. So gear wise we shot it on my A7S3 and two lenses, the Sony 3518 and 8518. And the reason I chose this is because it's the only two lenses I own. And then I used Glimmer Glass as diffusion to kind of knock that digital edge off. And then last I decided to shoot it in 155, which is pretty close to the Alexa Mini open gate look. And it's kind of a good in between, between 16x9 and 4x3. Okay, now we get into the fun stuff. You good? So day one of shooting, we did all the car scenes. And, and this is where my key grip Spencer really got to shine as we mounted $5,000 worth of camera gear on a $60 mount from Amazon. So I started with these shots from behind because the sun was still pretty high and I wanted to wait till it got a little bit lower to do the shots of his face. And by the way, during this shot, I'm laying down in the back seat right here with an HDMI cord running to a monitor. <laughs> but hey, you gotta make it work. So once the sun got a little bit lower, we flipped it around to do the shots of his face. And when we first put the camera up, we was getting this real bad reflection from the windshield. So I put a circular polarizer on, and that's pretty much just something to knock down reflections. So I tried to get him to drive north as much as possible, so that way the sun would just kind of wrap around his face just a little bit. And then you get all these cool reflections from the trees and the sun. So really, this one's all about scheduling and knowing what time and where to drive to get the best lighting. So after that, we hurried up and got the camera on sticks. And the theme of this music video, by the way, is like a back and forth between lovers. So it's kind of showing him going through the motions and going back and forth. Like, should I go see him? Should I not go see him? But it really wasn't a storyline as much as it just kind of was interpretive visuals. All right, so for this shot, we had sticks kind of over the shoulder, looking down on him. And he was looking at somebody just off screen to give him an eye line. The shot was pretty simple lighting wise. I just had somebody Hollywood, some neg over here. And then I had my gaffer Hollywood the tube light off camera right. And this just kind of gave a little bit of light um, on his face. Because we were starting to lose the sun, so he just needed a little level. And it also gave him a little eye light here. I like this shot just for the composition. But the one in DP broke it down on his channel. And he said it looks flat, so. I don't know. So after that, we did a company move to shoot some nice stuff for these tunnels. So for this shot, all we had was just some Amaran tubes off camera, and that's giving him this little light. And then this backlight is coming from the street lamps. And then this little crack effect was actually just a crack in the mirror of the car. So it was simple, but it was cool. And then this shot's pretty much the same setup. We just used some Amaran tubes to light his face. And then for the moving stuff, we just put him on the floor so he get a little up light. 
All right, so day two, we shot at the B&B. So for this shot, we just had two 200 X's outside, which were spilling through the window. And it was actually a cloudy day, and this is the only reason we could get that look, because a 200 watt light is not strong enough through the window. And then the only other thing I did in here was I boomed a little cheap $60 LED panel light over here. And this just kind of gave them a little top light, as if it was a bathroom light. But I ain't gonna lie, looking back, I wish I would have turned it down because it feels super saucy on top. And then when we go in for the close up, it don't really match. And then for the close up shot, we just walk those lights in so it'd be a little more dramatic on his face. And then I turned the overhead light off quite a bit because it was just looking a little too Philly. But I do love the little soft hob. He was kind of getting on his face from this because uh, there was some curtains that we shot the lights through. So that's what's giving him this soft wrap. And then this harsher light is just the open face light hitting him. So we got some covers of that and then we moved on to the bedroom scene. And this is probably my favorite scene of the whole video. So for this scene, all we did was we put a 200X outside. And I think it was set to like 3400 Kelvin. And that's just giving him this nice edge and this harsh light. And then I took the other 200X and bounced it into the ceiling. And that's what's giving him this little ambient return. But I think it's pretty believable, especially for 200 watt lights. But again, the only way that was possible is because it was cloudy outside. So thank you, Lord. And then we also shot this overhead. And this was just the camera on sticks looking down at him. And then for this shot, I turned that 200X outside down a little bit. So it wasn't so harsh on his face. Hey, let me tell y'all, this is why you hire our director for this shot right here. Just think about how boring it would have been if he had a cell phone and there wasn't this blanket. I'm telling you, that gonna make your life easy as a DP. So this shot was a little more complex lighting wise. So first thing, I put a practical bulb that I could dim on my phone in this lamp. And then I had my art director put a topper on this lamp so that way it wouldn't spill out all on the top. And this practical is motivating the key light, which is a 200X with a softbox on it. And then I threw a grid to keep the spill off the wall as much as I can. And that's what's giving him this light right here. Damn, I just delete. And then I added a LED panel overhead. And this is just to give him a little topper, but looking back, I should have took it away because it just kind of filled in the dark side. And then the last thing I added was the other 200X outside. And this is just giving a little soft, oh my gosh, I can't draw. And this is just giving that soft blue light just to add a little more depth. And then I chucked in for the close up, and I think this shot looks a lot better. The main difference between the two is I walked in some neg on this side and then I took down that topper light. So it's still there but it's a lot more subtle so your eyes kind of drawn to the key. And then the last shot we did was the shower scene. Lighting for this one was super simple. All we did was take one of them overhead booms and I just positioned it behind the water so that way it would be more backlit. Because you got to backlight water or rain to be able to see it. Yeah all this was was a little $60 Amazon light boomed overhead. The key thing for this one was just light placement because it was finding that balance of where it wouldn't be too much on the wall, but it also wouldn't be front lit or you wouldn't be able to see the rain and it look ugly. And then for some of these shots, I just had them sprinkle some water on the glass so that way you get that foreground look. Yeah, that's pretty much it cinematography wise. I tried to keep it pretty simple just because we had limited crew and uh, go for that vintage look. And then I'll briefly go over post-production since I edited and colored it too. So I use a phantom LED as my base layer and then just kind of tweaked, uh, mainly with the highlights and whites, just to try to get that as close to the film look as possible. And then lastly, I added a 35 millimeter grain overlay. And I wanted it pretty coarse, just so that way it'd show up on phones and stuff. Cause it's easy to see on a laptop, but on a phone it was harder to see for some of the grains. But yeah, I mean, overall, I'm pretty happy with how it came out, especially with the budget. So my lessons learned from this would definitely be to hire the best people that you can. I'm very blessed that I got some real talented friends who are willing to come out and help me with this. Um, but even if you don't got friends that work in the industry, hire people who are willing to help you and willing to give their all. Because it's going to be times where you're hungry and you're tired and you're not gonna be trying to do nothing and they definitely not gonna be trying to do nothing. But having that mutual respect for each other goes a long way. Um, so I was really thankful that the crew on this was solid and 
wasn't no times of stress or anger. It was just a lot of laughs and a lot of fun. And the other thing would just be to trust your eyes because a lot of times things might not really make sense, um, especially not to anybody else, but you just got to go with it because I'm a firm believer that if you're going to put your name on something, you better be proud of it. Third would just be to pray. You know, if you believe in God, I'm telling you, it's going to go a long way. But regardless, I'd always try to keep a positive attitude and keep smiling and laughing through things, even when you get frustrated, because getting mad and getting frustrated is not going to help nothing or nobody. There were several times that we was losing light or something wasn't going right, and I was just worried that it was all going to come out terrible, but this honestly came out to be one of my favorite pieces I've ever shot. So I'll just say trust the process, you know, don't, don't overthink, don't stress, but you know, enjoy it, because especially if you're starting out in your career like I am, there's really no better time to make mistakes, because if Greg Fraser shot something and it sucked, he'd be screwed, because he already got a name for himself. But not many people know Benji Osborne yet, so it's really okay if I mess up, because I don't get a whole lot of eyes on me. Lastly, I hope this encourages you that even if you don't get a huge budget or industry standard gear, you can still make something that you can really be proud of. So be encouraged because no matter where you at, there's always room for growth and improvement. But I hope you enjoyed this breakdown and learned something and got something out of it. I'm planning on doing a lot more of these breakdown style videos. So if there's something that interests you or you want to see more behind the scenes of, let me know. Leave me a comment. But yeah, thank y'all for watching. I don't really got an outro, but do what she says.